Lorene and I were married for 25 years. Her heart rhythm problem lasted off and on throughout that entire time period and preceded our marriage by about two years. She had an unusual problem, a rare disorder of heart rhythm and blood pressure. Many times she would go for months without any abnormality. Sometimes she would have severe abnormalities landing her in the intensive care unit, but she died at the age of 52. She was on a walk and had a cardiac arrest at that time, and it was quite a shock. Life-threatening cardiac arrhythmias are the largest remedial cause of death, stroke, and dementia in the United States. This means it can actually be cured if it is properly diagnosed and treated. Lorene was only 124 pounds, and to be able to see a heart rhythm on a small woman should be relatively easy. Uh, it was quite surprising to me how difficult it was. She must have had no less than 10 different external monitors. She also had two implantable monitors, none of which could specifically say this is the rhythm disorder. But she had complex disease and it would have been a challenge not an insurmountable challenge if one had the proper technology. Through his loss, Dr. Gust Barty found inspiration to improve heart monitoring technology in the hopes of saving lives. He developed the Carnation Ambulatory Monitor, a device that can be applied easily and worn discreetly by the patient. What makes this monitor revolutionary is that it is designed to record the P wave reliably. The P wave denotes the electrical activity of the upper chambers of the heart Historically, this is the most difficult signal to accurately record in the cardiac cycle. In the process of capturing the proper electrical signal from the upper chamber, one has to be close to that upper chamber, and the best place for that is actually the sternum, the center chest bone. But in ladies, uh, obviously, some uh, women might have trouble wearing something there because of the size of their breasts. Most monitors put electrodes in places that aren't comfortable for women. The Carnation Ambulatory Monitor is specifically designed for women. It's designed to be comfortable, discreet. An ambulatory monitor can record every heartbeat for up to seven days. And it's important to recognize that it's recording this during routine activities. If you're recording the heart rhythm when they're going to work, exercising, you're much more likely to capture the event that they're concerned about and provide the kind of information that directs the physician in a, in a way that the physician feels comfortable and confident that he can manage the patient well. The Carnation Monitor is only available through a physician and should be applied by medical personnel. Patients can exercise and shower while wearing the Carnation Monitor, and if sudden symptoms arise, the wearer simply pushes a button to indicate when symptoms are experienced. Once the monitoring period is over, patients can easily remove the device and return it for analysis. The Carnation Ambulatory ECG Monitor has made a huge difference in my practice. To give an example, I have an elderly lady who came to me complaining of palpitations and lightheadedness. We put the CAM monitor on and uh, after a week of monitoring, we were able to detect that she had atrial flutter. And the importance of that is because atrial flutter, in contrast to some of the other arrhythmias, uh, is associated with stroke. We initiated anticoagulation and potentially saved this woman from having a stroke in the future. These are things that are absolutely essential in clinical practice and delays in anticoagulation can lead to really significant consequences. Because of the um, enhanced P wave detection, your ability to define a specific arrhythmia is almost 100% with this monitor in my experience. It's a new opportunity to use a monitor that can be worn externally. It's easy to use, and the most important aspect of it is it gives you excellent resolution for the electrocardiogram. And that's what you need when you're trying to diagnose an arrhythmia or to try to rule out an arrhythmia. Uh, it's not very useful if you have a lot of artifact on a rhythm, 
a recording, which is unfortunately oftentimes the case. But this one has, in my experience at least, less often artifact and a better opportunity to see what's going on in both the top of the heart and the bottom of the heart, two critical components for rhythm diagnosis. So I've been very excited about using this technology. Most people don't think of heart monitoring as something that's routine healthcare. Uh, they might think of blood pressure checks, uh, prostate level in men, uh, cholesterol levels, sugar levels for diabetes. But in fact, monitoring the heart rhythm makes as much sense and in some cases even more sense than those things given the profundity of downstream problems that can occur if a heart rhythm is not diagnosed or understood. My mission for this is straightforward. It's to help the patient with heart rhythm problems by delivering meaningful, actionable information. We've had no improvements, really substantially, no improvements over the course of monitoring history. And so I want to see this raised to a higher level so that patients are benefited and doctors get the information they need.